The final horn has sounded. And today's game is complete. He gives it back to TJ, who gives it a low to Yo on the pick and roll. And Yo throws it down. The throwdown is a Yo down. Time now for Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's your host, Jason Shepard. BYU falls at home tonight to number four Gonzaga, 93-63. Welcome in to Cougar Post Game Live. We'll get you back over to the Marriott Center coming up in just a few minutes. Cougars, no time to worry about this one now that it is over. Quick turnaround. They'll be back in action at the Marriott Center Saturday night hosting the LMU Lions. That will be a game, obviously, you will hear, as you always do right here on the new skin BYU Sports Network. We will have Cougar pregame live, brought to you by Discount Tire, uh, starting at 8 p.m. Eastern time, tip-off at 9 p.m. Eastern time. In the meantime, let's update you on some other action earlier tonight. We will start with BYU women's basketball. They were ranked 25th in the country, breaking into the top 25 for the first time this season this week. They were on the road at LMU. Cougars looking to extend their 11-game winning streak to 12. BYU got themselves in some trouble. They were down 14 points with three and a half minutes to go on the road at LMU. The Cougars fought their way back, took a lead, but unfortunately a turnover uh, with 15 seconds to go allowed LMU to go back and score as well as get fouled. A couple of free throws later, uh, BYU's comeback uh, falls just a little bit short. LMU defeating BYU tonight 61 to 58. All right, other local action tonight. We will start in Salt Lake City, the University of Utah hosting the Oregon Ducks. The Ducks win this one by six in Salt Lake City, 78-72 the final score. Also tonight in Ogden, the news not great for Weber State. Portland State comes in and defeats the Wildcats by a single point, 76 to 75. Other action in the WCC. It is all a final. Pepperdine getting a big win at Portland, 83 58. And by big win, I mean in terms of the margin of victory. They destroyed Portland, who, by the way, is now 0 and 8 in West Coast Conference play. And LMU gets the win at home over Pacific, 60 to 42. The uh, Lions now 4-4 four and four in conference play. Very light night in top 25 action in college basketball. 13th ranked Houston at home defeats Temple 73-66. to 66. The Houston Cougars now 21-1 and one overall, 8-1 and one in the American. Also, this one went to overtime, but number 17 Purdue gets the win at Penn State by 9, 99-90. All right, coming up on the other side, we'll get to... More scores from the pros. Big night in the NBA, including LeBron James making his return after five weeks of an injury. He's back in L.A. as the two teams from Los Angeles face off. The Lakers and the Clippers will update you on that score. Coming up on the other side, your final tonight from the Marriott Center, though. Gonzaga defeating BYU by 30. 93-63 is the final. We'll have more of Cougar Post Game Live coming your way next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is Cougar Post Game Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU falls at home tonight, 93-63 to fourth-ranked Gonzaga. Welcome back in to Cougar Post Game Live. Jason Shepard with you. Time for the Mountain America three-point recap. For each three-pointer BYU makes, Mountain America donates $50 to the American Red Cross. Tonight, the Cougars made six three-pointers for a total of $300. That brings the donation total for the season to $8,000. Let's update you on the night in the NBA only one game going on, and it's a tight one. Ten and a half seconds to go in the fourth quarter. At Staples Center, the Clippers and the Lakers tied at 112 apiece. This was LeBron James' return. He's got 20 points, 12 rebounds, and seven assists. He's missed the last five weeks due to an injury. Uh, this game coming down with uh, five seconds to go. And LeBron actually trying to score for the Lakers. It goes off of his leg in a turnover so at game still tied at 112 apiece 
Finals from earlier tonight. The Pistons defeating the Dallas Mavericks 93-89. Magic on top of the Pacers 107-100. to Milwaukee winning in Toronto over the Raptors 105-92. to San Antonio defeats the Brooklyn Nets in San Antonio 117-114. to And the Warriors, another home loss. Philadelphia goes into the Bay Area and defeats Golden State 113-104. to That is a wrap for Cougar Post Game Live. After the break, back over to the Marriott Center for the Cougar Locker Room Show. Your final tonight from Provo, 93-63. Gonzaga defeats BYU. You heard it all right here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Our exclusive post-game coverage continues with the Cougar Locker Room Show. Doubles to the free throw line, gives to TJ, pulls, fires, scores from three. TJ Haas rattles it home. Now let's head back to the Bryant Heating and Cooling Comfort courtside seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Number four, Gonzaga, comes into the Marriott Center, walks out with a 30-point win, 93-63. to As good as Gonzaga is, Mark, uh, losing by 30 here on this floor is uh, all but unforeseen. That's a rare occurrence. Even against the best teams, you would hope to be, or you would be able to compete a little bit better than they did tonight. But, man, I tell you, Gonzaga is really good. So what's got to happen is they have to not play particularly well, and you have to play your best game. And uh, that certainly didn't happen tonight. BYU, I think, had some chances early to maybe get a, get a little bit of a lead. He got a couple of steals and maybe put some pressure on Gonzaga. When they didn't do that, it was uh, it was going to be a long night. Zach Selly is joining us, popping on the headset for a couple of seconds here post game. Zach with five for seven shooting tonight, three of five from three, 13 points on the night as BYU falls at home to the Zags. Uh, first up, Zach, let's uh, give credit where credit is due. That's a number 14 that looks like it and plays like it, don't they? Yeah, they're a very good team, and you know, it really showed tonight. And, you know, you just got to kind of learn from it. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's a tough loss tonight. You maybe want to be better than than you showed, but that kind of marks the halfway point of the season and or the, the conference season. How does this team feeling about uh, how they've done so far in conference? Um. No, we feel good about you now what we've achieved and what we've kind of come through since the preseason. Um, we just got to you know, honestly keep keep learning. You know, That's just how the season goes. You just have to keep learning and keep growing each day. And you know, it's just becoming a better player and a better team you know, every single day, whether that's the game or the practice or, you know, you just got to keep going. It felt like in the early part of the game, uh, much of what you wanted to get from a schematic standpoint, you were getting. Shots weren't dropping. Yeah, no. We were getting good looks, and, you know, when they go and double-team Yoli, you know, you always seem to have good looks, and they just, I think we were just too excited, you know, you know just wide-open shots, and, you know, and sadly they didn't start falling until later in the game, but, you know, we just got to be able to knock those down. Zach Selyus, our guest. It is our Sport Court courtside conversation. It has been brought to you by Sport Court. Champion start here. Learn how to design yours at sportcourt.com. More from Zach Selyus after this break on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cougar Locker Room Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. 13 points in almost 24 minutes for our sport court courtside interview guest, Zach Selyus tonight. Gonzaga wins it by a score of 93 to 63. So, Zach, a quick turnaround. Uh, 48 hours and you're back on the floor. LMU coming in here on Saturday night. Chance to get back on the uh, bounce back trail and uh, get back to winning some games here in league. You've hit halfway point at 5-3. and three. How do you feel about the first half of league? Mark kind of alluded to it. But the second half starts Saturday night with LMU. Things you need to keep in mind as you get going here on Saturday. What are they? Um, I think we just need to keep in mind, you know, just to uh, play as a team. You know, have energy, be able to, you know, just keep going through the ups and downs and just keep fighting every game. No matter what it is, we just got to keep fighting and keep, you know, just attacking and staying on attack throughout the rest of the season. You know, and just that's kind of how we started the season, how the, we started the regular season, and we just got to keep going and keep fighting. You mentioned attacking. It seems to me... From observing your game, that's that's really been a more of a focus for you this year is putting it on the floor. Obviously, a good three-point shooter, but really trying to get to the rim. Is that accurate? Is that a conscious thing you've been trying to do? Yeah, no, definitely. You know, it's it's something that I want to improve as a player. You know, I didn't want to be just a kind of a one-dimensional guy. I wanted to try to, you know, be able to improve everything and you know, get everything in the arsenal and just kind of 
and will have different attack stuff and you know you just got to keep working and keep you know improving on those things the three threes you had tonight zach the second most you've had on a game this year you had five against alabama a and m uh, no more than two in any other game so did it feel good to get in a bit of a groovy you know, even though it came late tonight yeah it felt good you know, it was it was good to see it go in again and you know, it's uh, just as a shooter, you just got to kind of forget the past and just keep going for every game. So you just kind of forget about it, and you just keep looking forward. Good to see some shots drop for you, and hopefully better things in store for you and the guys on Saturday nights. Thanks for checking in with us, spending a few minutes, and good luck against the Lions on Saturday. Thank you. All right, that's Zach Selyus, Dave Rose, coming up next here on the New Skin BYU Sports Network. It's time to get the final word on today's game with head coach Dave Rose. It's the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. The Cougar Post Game Coaches Show is also brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. Now let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. More than 15,000 fans on hand to watch BYU and Gonzaga tonight. Number four team in the country comes in and uh, outlasts the Cougars 93-63. to It is our BYU Creamery Cougar postgame coaches show. BYU head coach Dave Rose now joining us here courtside. Uh, coach Rose, uh, clearly uh, you, you applaud the Zags for playing the way they did. And I think by the same token, you say that uh, in terms of a game plan you wanted to execute, Almost everything but the finishing touch was happening for you in the early part of this game. Yeah, I mean, we ended up shooting, you know, 36, 37% from the field and 27 from three. And, you know, that's that's a hard number to try to beat these guys because these, these guys are, uh, you know, really class of, uh, you know, the collegiate basketball. And uh, I thought that, uh, you know, Yoli did a really good job early of getting that ball out of that double team. And we got it to, um, you know, shooters and, and we, we didn't make, you know the shots that I think we're capable of making, and then we, so we then we, what we decided to do was we get that thing out and then we start driving and, and, and playing off off of their closeout and makes you a little bit quicker. And we got in there and drove that thing in there and it's the ball seemed to hang on the rim quite a few times and um, and uh, you know just it just wouldn't go in and and uh, and in that time it's just so hard to hold them off, hold them off and hold them off and. You know, so the, it goes, you know, the 6, then the 10, then the 12, and then you make a little run back. And, you know, the bottom line is is that, uh, you know, you know, when you get those shots like we had, you know, we, early, we just need to make them. I mean, if, we, if we get those in, then uh, maybe, maybe it's, it's a little, you know, different story at halftime. We make that run coming out of the second half. Uh, you know, instead of cutting it to 14, you might cut it to 6 or 8, and, um, and, and things change a little bit. But this is a really good team, and this team came in here and, the impressive thing is that they 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 just they did what they wanted to do and uh, 21 assists on 37 baskets that's how Mark's teams play and they were able to do it in here tonight only turn the ball over nine times and shoot 50 percent from the three and you know I, I I knew there wouldn't be a lot of free throws in this game tonight because the, just the referees you just go into the database and look they, there's just not a lot of fouls called from this group of guys and a lot of things went on out there tonight that you know probably in some games would have ended up at the free throw line, but you know we didn't get a chance to uh, to get to the free throw line much, and and it's a it, it's a it's a big part of the way we score. So, um, but uh, I I just I I just think that uh, they came in and played really well and executed really well, but we can play better than this, and uh, you know I I'm so appreciative to all the fans who showed up. It's a 9 o'clock game. We have a great crowd in here. It's a great building. Everybody's just waiting, you know, to cheer and to get our guys on. And every time we make a basket, you can tell it just, you know, the the energy in the building kind of lifts our guys. But we just, the baskets were too few and far between. And then on um, in the second half defensively, we had so many breakdowns that we just couldn't keep it, keep it going. You had a week between games, which is unusual in conference play. Maybe it doesn't translate too much tonight, but what were some things that were worked on uh, over this past week? Well, we spent most of the week working on Gonzaga. I mean, this was a big game for us, and we felt like they, they had to buy themselves, you know, so they had, um, you know, a week off to prepare for us. And, uh, um, you know, I, I felt like, you know, if, we, if, if, if we'd have played, um, you know, what I consider to be one of our better games, um, that you know this thing would have been close and, and gone down to the wire and, and tonight we just didn't get uh, the execution uh, that we needed to get. All right, uh, Dave Rose with us. So we'll come back and identify tonight's big time performance of the game and get closing comments from the coach. BYU falls to Gonzaga tonight, 93 to 63 on the new skin BYU Sports Network. 
You're listening to the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. It is the BYU Creamery Cougar Post Game Coaches Show. We'll hear from uh, Mark Few coming up in a few moments. A few moments, as it were. <laughs> uh, 93-63 zags over the Cougs tonight. Time for our big-time performance of the game, brought to you by Bank of American Fork. Enjoy a free checking account that could earn big interest with the MyRate checking account from Bank of American Fork. He shot 50% from the field, made his free throws, scored 16 points with three rebounds and a couple of assists along with a steal. T.J. Haas gets the nod tonight, uh, played almost 33 minutes, and uh, on a night when it was tough to make a ton of shots, uh, Coach Rose, or at least see them go in, T.J. was 7-14 of 14 from the field for you. Yeah, he's a he's a fighter, and he he just keeps competing and and you know battles to the end. He got you know that third foul kind of early in the second half, and we we, we stayed with him, and uh, you know he he managed that all the way you know to the end. And I I think that uh, you know Tej is is really you know finding just his comfort level uh, you know at this at this level and in in our league, and um, I, I think that. Uh, for us to be able to to compete and play and and win games like this um that that what i would consider to be a a really good game by tj that that we need four or five or six guys to be able to to play in in that uh you know in in that kind of uh the the space that he's playing and you look at the zags and and uh they had you know a 10 for 13 a 8 for 13 a 6 for 9 a 5 for 10 Those, those are pretty good offensive numbers and you throw TJ in there at seven for 14, and you know Zach hit some big shots for us late, went five for seven on the game, and, and those three threes that he hit hopefully are really big confidence boosters for him because uh, we, we 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 talk about this a lot, and and we, you know especially after we get beat, um, it, it, we just need more guys that are you know playing their A game, and if we can get that, uh, I think the, the the wins will follow. Yeah, second highest number of threes in a game uh, for Zach this year. Had five against Alabama A&M, and now uh, three here tonight. Uh, second most. And and there were there were a lot of open threes available tonight. I mean, in our guys, and and early, I think if we could have busted a couple of those, you know, in that it, you know, could have changed the just the mindset of our guys. But uh, um, they're you know the, the the Zachs are long and they're athletic and they're quick and all those type of things. But I still think that. You know, uh, next time we get them, we, we will play a little bit better and, and hopefully hit those things. We'll hit those things. Kevin continues to impress. 25 minutes tonight. He's a he's a good plus minus guy. He's minus six, but that's one of the best on the t- on the team tonight with the number of minutes. So he seems to really make a difference out there. What kind of what what does he kind of still uh, obviously a lot of things, but what what are you looking for him to improve on that can really help his game at this point? Well, he keeps getting better and better, and I, I think that, that we we talked about this before. It's just more time you know he, he's uh he's trying to you know get himself in, in in game shape to where he can play you know a 35 or 40 minute game um uh, i think that he plays so hard that he does fatigue pretty pretty early i think that's probably maybe the 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 biggest thing right now is that uh you know just his uh, ability to to play at the the level that he has to play at as far as the energy that he gives and then his ability to stay on the floor a little bit longer i i think that you know, the, the 24, 25, um, 28 minutes a game is somewhere that he can get to be really comfortable playing. Okay, you've hit the halfway point of uh, the league slate at 5-3. Uh, and three. Thoughts on the first go-around here? Well, we still haven't played San Diego or LMU. And so that's, um, you know, I, the, both those teams really, you know, they, they it really impressed me. They had great preseason schedules, and they had, uh, as far as records are concerned, and, and they're, LMU tonight played tremendously as, as far as defensively. I think they held Pacific to 42 points. They and did. They got one point like in the last eight minutes of the game is what I think one of the guys were telling me. 17-1 so. to one run to close. And uh, so, you know, th- that's uh, that's still out there, you know, as far as we'll play those two teams p- twice. But uh, the run through, it, it, I mean, the league's, league's good. You, you, you figure we got beat at San Francisco and we got beat at St. Mary's, and I think most of the league will probably – have problems at those two places, and then uh, we got beat by the Zags at home, uh, which right now the Zags seem to be, you know, beating everybody everywhere. And so, 
hopefully we can keep getting better. We can get some wins and get some confidence and, uh, you know, play our best basketball here in the last month. All right. LMU's won the three of four. They'll be in here on Saturday night. Uh, Coach, best of luck against the Lions on the weekend. All right. Thanks a lot, Greg. All right. We'll come back here from Mark Few next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Final score tonight to number four, Gonzaga 93, and unranked BYU 63. Mark Few, head coach of the Zags, now has 22 consecutive 20-win seasons. Zags go to 20-2. and two. These were Coach Few's comments to the assembled media a short time ago outside the Gonzaga locker room. Uh, I mean, our guys are taking the game plans to heart, and they're going out and playing with great effort. And, and you know, for the most part, it started out a little rocky uh, Tonight, they've been taking great care of the ball, you know, and when we take good care of the ball, I mean, we got a lot of different ways to score, so obviously that's a big key, and then our defense has been getting better and better and better, and, and it, it it was really good tonight, especially in that first half. What did you think of what you did with Oz, and particularly on Childs? Well, I mean, those are two really, really good players, so we, we really had to work on our doubling schemes with uh, uh, Childs, and, and for the most part, I like... Not only our doubling, but just how we rotated out of it. That's a, that's a, always a big worry. So, thought that was good. Um, for the most part, we did a decent job on Haas. He's a hard guard. He just has the ball and he's moving and cutting, and I mean, he must be in phenomenal shape. Uh, but I think he ended up with 15 or 17. But I thought we made him earn it, so felt good about that. How was it playing in this atmosphere tonight, in Provo? Well, we've played here a lot, so um, it's a great atmosphere. Our guys look forward to playing here. You know, it's a big-time venue and it's a, a big-time team, so it's one of those games I think our guys really get up for. And, and uh, uh, you know, if you can't, as I told the guys before, this is why you play college basketball to come into an, an arena and environment like that. And, you know, and if you win one on it like this on the road, there's nothing better. When you get those two going inside, it's tough for anybody to deal with. Yeah, but I thought we had pretty darn good balance. Corey was, uh, you know, knocking down threes, and Snacks was, for the most part, knocking down threes. But I thought Snacks had some nice drives. And, and uh, But, yeah, I mean, those two, uh, Brandon was really, really efficient. And then I thought Rui was, I thought Rui made some real strong, tough, you know, man plays where he got knocked around, knocked around, still got hit and delivered and, you know, was able to get some man ones. Are those points that uh, he showed for Groves that uh, he was able to uh, man up against Charles? Yeah, I mean, again, Yoli's a, a high-level guy that I think will play at the next level, so any time he can, you know, make a move and score against him or make a play against him, that's a good thing, and including guard him. I mean, he's a really hard guy to guard, so it was good. I thought Rui and Rui was on him most of the night, so... I thought he represented himself very well. Also, the rebounds that uh, he, he was. Yeah, able no, to he's doing up. a better job rebounding. Uh, 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 you know, that's been something I've really been on him about, and it's something that he can get better at. But he, he's 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 much improved than he was a month ago with that. His strength helps him match up with Charles. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Rui's probably our, he's our biggest, strongest guy. You know, so that I mean, he's both weight-wise and and. Uh, Strength-wise, and, and uh, when he wants to be, he's kind of an immovable object. So, you know, we've kind of been going that direction here about the last month when we play these big physical fives. This was a pretty perfect game for you, but what do you hope to see kind of change for a team when you meet up with BYU again? I mean, we just need to keep getting better. I, I mean, that's it. We just the, the team that made it all the way to the national championship got better every week, and I, that, that's what we're trying to do. You know, we still have. Tons of room for growth, you know. I think Tilly just getting him back into the swing of things, and and there's still some little nuances on, on defensively, and then like tonight, you know, just kind of sloppy with our, our taking care of the ball early. So there's always stuff we can get better. At. All right, that's Mark Few, head coach of the Gonzaga Bulldogs, who go to 20 and two overall, seven and zero in the WCC, five and one in true away venues. And those, all those streaks just continue. Uh, 22 consecutive 20-win seasons. They are tied for second now with Duke at uh, 22. Kansas at 29 leads the way. Uh, the Zags have won 11 straight games overall this season. Uh, they've won 21 straight games against conference opponents in all venues. And now 28 straight away games in uh, WCC competition. So amazing runs, all of them. 
for the mighty Gonzaga Bulldogs. BYU falls tonight to 13 and 10. And the Cougs now 5-3 and three in the WCC as they hit the halfway point, and they'll take LMU into the Marriott Center on Saturday night. That's our next broadcast. 6 o'clock pregame, 7 o'clock tip for BYU and LMU. Our thanks to Cougar Nation for tuning in tonight, wherever you were or are listening on satellite, to over the air, on an app, online. Good to have you with us. You can enjoy the broadcast live and on demand at byuradio.org and via the BYU Basketball Podcast, the BYU Men's Basketball Podcast. Search for it and get all your Cougar hoops that way. Our appreciation to our crew back at BYU Radio just across the way, our studio host, Jason Shepard, our control board operator, Nathan Israelson, our coordinating producer, Terry South. Our broadcast intern tonight back uh, in the studio was Tess Anderson. We thank as well... Uh, Sean O'Neill and Don Shaline, along with others at BYU Radio for their assistance. Courtside, my statistician tonight was our broadcast intern here in the building, Lindsey Peterson, also getting our postgame comments from Coach Pugh. Thanks to Linz. Color commentary colleague, of course, is Mr. Mark Durant. Our appreciation goes out to Kyle Chilton, BYU Basketball Media Relations Director, and the same guy for Gonzaga, Barrett Henderson, for his assistance in helping us talk with their Brian Michelson in the pregame. That is uh, credit to everyone who deserves it tonight, and we again thank you for tuning in. So thanks once again for being with us for 93-63. The Zags take care of the Kooks tonight, BYU and LMU on Saturday night. My name is Greg Rubel. Saying in the meantime and in between time, this has been BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Good night and so long from Provo, Utah. You've been listening to live coverage of BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU Basketball is a production of BYU Athletics in association with BYU Broadcasting. Special thanks to BYU President Kevin Worthen, Vice President Matt Richardson, Athletic Director Tom Holmo, and General Manager of Corporate Sponsorships Casey Stoffer. BYU Basketball is an exclusive presentation of the new skin, BYU Sports Network.